here. I'm Anna. And today is one of those days we are going to make a ton of cards. We're going to make a ton of cards pretty quickly. And throughout, I'm going to share some tips with you for how to make a lot of cards in just a little bit of time. So let's get started. We are starting with just some card bases and some designer paper. And I have some fun things planned here to show you how to make a lot of cards in a little bit of time. So the products I'm using, I'm actually using a new pack of paper that I'm really excited about. This is called Abstract Beauty. The Stampin' Up! January through June mini catalog was just released a couple of days ago. And this is the page in the catalog 49 uh, where you can see this beautiful paper. This is different than the other paper we've offered before because it comes in four by four inches by six inches uh, it's pre-cut into those dimensions. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Now, I'm going to use regular card bases, but I want to mention that you can order card bases that coordinate with some fun little embellishments as well to make your job of doing what we're going to do here even easier if you want to. But here you can see, I just love the designs in this pack, and you can see those gold foil accents. These are just so fun and bright. There are some that would be appropriate for men. There are lots that would be appropriate for women and children. So we are going to trim these into certain dimensions and then assemble them in different ways on our cards. And even though we're making a lot of cards, every single one of them is going to be one of a kind. So what I wanna start with is showing you how we are going to trim these pieces to prepare them to put on a card. So what I did was I came up with four different ways of cutting these. Now, if you don't have this Abstract Beauty Designer Paper Pack, keep in mind, you can start with 12 by 12 sheets and easily cut them down into four by six pieces. So you can get six of this size from one piece of 12 by 12 designer paper. But I really like these small ones because you get so many different prints in this pack. So it's going to make for a lot of variation in, in, in our cards. So I have already cut some of these down, but I'll show you how I did it. So this first one, what I'm going to do is take it and lay it sideways at the three inch mark. We're going to cut this piece in half so that we have two pieces that measure three inches by four inches. So that's the first way I cut some of my pieces. Now, I cut mine several at a time. You can actually stack them and cut two or three at a time, which saves some time. With this next one, I am going to line up this edge on the right at the three quarter inch mark. And I'm gonna grab a different print because that strip on the end, I don't want to be all pink. We'll get one of these that has a print on the end. So I have a three quarter inch piece and I have a piece that perfectly mats a regular A2 size card. So this is four by five and a quarter. So I did a few of those. Now this next one, I am going to cut off, same way, three quarters of an inch right here. And then I'm going to trim this at an angle cut these in half so we have some angular pieces okay and last but not least we are going to cut a half an inch off of the end of this piece now we're going to cut one and a quarter inches off of the right side and the piece that remains, we can cut into two squares. So we need to cut this at two and three quarters inches, okay? So I have a stack of these pieces now that I can show you. I'll bring these in and we are going to start assembling these onto the card bases. So I am going to fan these out a little bit so that I can see what pieces I have available may not be able to fit all of them within your view, but I will try. So here are those angled pieces that we cut down here. Here are those basic rectangles. And the ones we 
just cut last. So I could see all my pieces. Now I prepared some card bases and how I did that was I pulled out each of the colors that are mentioned on the paper pack. It says what colors are in them. So I pulled out one piece of cardstock for all of them. I scored them in half, cut them in half. So I have two card bases for each color in this pack. So I am going to lay these out and just start piecing together papers on the front that I think look nice. So we'll do a little bit of this together. I'll explain a little bit. And then after I do a few, then I will kind of go on my way and we'll, we'll fast forward so you can watch through this pretty quickly. But I am just going to lay some of these on here so that they look nice. And what's fun is we can do any any pattern at all that we like. So I can do those. Uh, we can do, I think I like that strip across there at the bottom. Here, we'll do that with the strip. And there is no right or wrong to this. No right or wrong at all. So I know a lot of times we get worked up about the measurements on a card or uh, does this look okay together? Does this fit? Is this how I should be doing this? Uh, but measurements in particular, and sometimes measurements are really important. Sometimes they are not at all important. And this is one of those times where you can cut these however you like. I gave you my example of how I cut them, but we can cut them in a lot of other ways too. So for right now, I am going to scoot some of these pieces out of the way so that you can see my prepared cards a little bit better. And let's go ahead and finish these five. And then I will have you watch along quickly while I do some, while I do the rest of them. So here, these are a little bit falling apart, but so this is how I am going to attach the designer paper pieces onto these card bases. And you can see how quickly that went. I didn't really think about it a whole lot. I just started doing it. And here you can see if I flip my papers over, I have lots more options of prints, but I am not worried about that because I think they look nice the way they are. One thing that's nice about the way I did this, pulling all of these from one paper pack is that they all coordinate. So all of my colors are going to look nice together no matter what. I know a lot of times when I do this, I think like, oh, I'm going to pull one pa one piece of paper from one pack and another paper piece from another pack so that I can get some variation. But if I start doing that, it is really going to make it a lot harder. It's going to take more time because I'll have to start paying more attention to which colors coordinate. So we'll put that one there. One thing that saves a lot of time when I'm doing more cards like this is to flip all of my pieces over at the same time. And I may do more of this once, uh, w when I can spread out. I want you to be able to see what's happening here, but if I could spread out more, I would do even more of this and flip all of my pieces over, put adhesive on the back of all of them at the same time, and then they can all be stuck down. So normally I use tape. A lot of times I use my seal or my seal plus, but I do think that glue saves me a little bit of time when I'm doing a lot. Okay, so there's three of them. Let's do these other two. I really like how this looks with the two angled pieces together. And then I flip them over and I see like, oh my gosh, I love that print. Maybe I should use that print, but I'm not going to overthink these. We do a lot of that, don't we? As card makers, lots of overthinking. Next time you're overthinking, tell yourself, it doesn't really matter. Whoever gets this card is going to love it and just go with it. Okay, and we'll do this one and then we are going to talk about some greeting tags and I, oh, oh, I just can't cover up that gold foil. Okay, we're going to use this one instead. 
I would have just flipped the gold over and used it on the orange card, but gold and orange isn't really my thing. I bet it looks cool to somebody else, but it didn't look cool to me. So we will save that for another one. Oh, and here's another one. I love that print. I am definitely going to have to make some with that print on the top side. Okay, now tags. This is one of my favorite things. I have to show you this. And if you follow along with what I share, you've seen this before. But I have this fishing tackle box full of reassemble tags. Now, you might look at this and think like, wow, she spent days on that. And I didn't because I used a particular product to prepare these. So before I show you that product, I'll mention I had these organized by category. And I love this tackle box because I can pull these pieces out and change how big the little uh, the little pockets, that's not the right word, but how big they are for the different size tags. But I have them arranged so I have like birthdays and babies and congratulations and encouragement. Thank you. They each have their own little spot in there. Now here is what I used to make those. And when I first saw this, I didn't really understand the concept, but I soon understood the concept and absolutely loved it. So we have, there's actually two different stamp sets. You can choose one or both. But it is, I think it's 19 different greetings, somewhere around there. Uh, but they're all on one stamp. And I've had people get this and be like, well, I need to cut these apart. And then I quickly tell them, don't cut them apart until you see what you can do with it. So after you stamp your one big stamp with all those pieces, you can lay your die on top of all of it. Run this through your cut and emboss machine one time. And you have, like I said, I think it's 19 tags cut out all at once. So I truly prepared all of these tags by running those through my machine not more than 10 times. Okay, so this did not take me very long at all. So we have the two different, we have many messages and many happenings. They have different greeting assortments, which is really nice. I've used some of both of those. You can also use that die with your own sentiment stamps which is cool i have done a video so i can share those with i'm going to put some links in here and they'll be in the video description below to find more information on how you do all of that because i've shared those in the past now i'm going to pull in some of my tags i have already prepared a whole bunch of these tags i already have dimensionals on the back of you know about 20 of them so here are a couple, I want to show you how I do this because again, we're talking about saving time, handy tips that make your stamping experience better. So here is my take your pick tool. Many of you have seen me do this before, but I absolutely love that I can use this to apply my dimensionals and then I can also use it to remove the paper backing from the back. So I know uh, for some of us, our fingers don't work very well, and this is just a really helpful tool. So I am going to lay out my tags on these. I am going to add a few embellishments. I love when I make simple cards like this to add just a little bit of bling. I decided to use these adhesive backed hexagons because they go with the set. They look really nice together. So... Have fun, my friends. We're going to craft. I will come back to you at the end and give you an update on how many cards I made and how much time it took me.
my friends. So I have just finished up and I have 18 completed cards that I just made in about half an hour. So uh, I think that is fantastic to be able to make what is that about a card every two minutes a little more than that so thanks so much for watching along i hope you saw a few things here that can help you uh, maybe these products maybe that tag set the many messages love it highly recommend it uh but yeah hopefully this can help you build up your card stash maybe you can use cards as gifts maybe you can donate them there's so many things we can do with our cards to make the world a better place so thanks for watching along. You can find links to the products I used in the video description below. Hope you have a blessed day and I hope to see you again next time when I'll be back helping you to hand make with love.